Hello everybody, Marcel Koenen here. Uh, I got recently some questions uh, about uh, how I mixed and mastered everything my new album. So I'll give you a little bit insight. Of course I won't, uh, I won't give everything because it's also a little bit of uh, my sauce. But uh, I'll tell a little bit how I did this because I did everything on my own. And I use Studio One for this. So at the moment I have Studio One 6.5 loaded, but uh, I did I think the album most most in Studio Five, Studio One Five, because uh, that was back then when I recorded it, uh, still the, the version that was going on. Anyway, it doesn't matter because uh, Studio One just up upgrades itself uh, with new functions all the time, just like the Axe FX does, just as micro guitar equipment. At the moment I have the FM9 loaded here, as you can see. But the FM9 is uh, is actually on the floor here, and I recorded most of the album using Axe FX or an FM9, so I can show you a little bit what I used. Well, I loaded up uh, the song um, Antisophobia for you. Antisophobia is a song from my uh, new album Resurrection that came out uh, the 1st of October online. The CDs are almost ready, so uh, the people that supported me on Kickstarter and 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 beyond, uh, they will receive the CDs pretty soon. When I when I got them at home, then I will send them out immediately. So, so I'll show you a little bit um, what what the song sounds like. It's more it's more like uh, like this. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a mix full of uh, things. These are real drums. Huh? So so I programmed the song at first with Easy Drummer. Uh, when I when I wrote it, of course it's muted now. You see, but Easy Drummer sounded like like this. Just how I programmed it, so that uh, the drummer knew what to play. This is how I made it. So that's uh, my my little programming uh, there, but uh, the drummer played uh, his own version and he did it like this. That sounds also better, I think. <laughs> mm. So you see, I'm using three kick microphones. Kick one. Two and three. So kick one and two are two inside micro mic microphones, and kick three is an outside microphone. So from the outside of the skin, and uh, just solo the kicks. They sound like this. So that's the kick sound. Um, the snare are two microphones, so you have a top and a bottom. So the snare sound in general is more like this. It has a little bit of bleed from from cymbals, but I don't mind that because uh, it gives a more a richer sound in general from acoustic drums. So it sounds more like this. <laughs> It has some hi hat in there as well. The hi hat I have, I have also loose on the album, so it's on the on the other side. And uh, yeah, the toms um, are four toms and the gong drum. So that was the gong drum, drum that you heard there. So so this little sound, a huge fat sound that he uh, used on there. And uh, here you can hear. Uh, so that sounds a bit like like this. So yeah, that's uh, that's how the so tom sounds separate. It all goes to groups. This is how I work. So I send the whole drums to to groups because I have overhead mics here. I have the right cymbal as a loose, and then I have room microphones. 
so fourth uh, several room right so there are some more place in the room and um yeah that together that goes all to groups so they, they have here i have a drums uh these five groups i use for for or actually i use these six groups in total for four drums so you have five groups and then one which gets everything so the five groups that are uh, sent out of the tracks are the kick drum so these three channels i make one channel in the end and i put a limiter on there um then you have like uh, the drums hardware so everything goes to the drums hardware you see here uh for instance the drums toms goes to the hardware the drums overhead all right it's just the drums and and the kick you see it the kick drum and the drum toms goes to the goes to the drums hardware and the drums hardware goes to the drums total so so these go first through this filter it has a compressor that i use on there and it has a limiter on there that uh, that that i use so these you uh, you see using uh, as well um Tom's overhead, uh, I have a se separate channel. Um, I have on some some things I have uh, like extra extra things on on you know, here like overheads and room. I put uh, from Chris Lord Algae a, a plugin from Waves on there just to make it a little bit more richer. Drums, uh, I can show you how uh, how they sound. So drums total, it's just the total drums. So that's the whole whole drum kit. So the kick drum is just a kick drum. The toms are the toms. Won't display anything when there are no toms. So that's logical. But I think there should be the toms coming in there. There you go. So that's the toms. Um, you have the drums overheads, this, this is only the overheads. So also the, the right and the hi-hat goes uh, separate to the overhead channels. And then I have the room, the, the room channel that goes like this. So it gives a bit more low ends, a little bit more like really a bit far away sound in there. And that makes uh, the total uh, the total sound like this. So drums are played by my good friend Hans in the Sand. He's also a drummer for Praying Mantis, uh, an English group that plays new wave of British heavy metal. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, uh, they are uh, uh, Hans uh, did record all his drums at home and sent me the tracks, and then I mixed them in with uh, with, with my song. And my song has uh, this, so these are all the drum channels. So let's unsolo that. There you go. So um, I have like a bass guitar in there. The bass I played myself using this chord bass. This is the bass I used for the recording. This is a five string bass with some active electronics and stuff. Sounds killer, Bartolini pickups and stuff like this. And uh, I played straight into my FM9 or XFX that you see here above the, um, uh, the settings in, 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 the, in the left corner. And uh, I use the recording tab for this, and I also have uh, have a sound muscle bass recording. And this is, let's see, this one. So bass recording, you see, it's very simple. Um, I used out of the, I use this as amp. It's it's, it's a SV bass. It's an SVT, uh, Ampeg SVT amp into uh, as SV bass cabinet and also a 2 times 15 cabinet in there so to give a bit more uh, uh, low end to this and there's a compressor in front more I did not use to record the bass 
very simple very effective and it goes directly into the into the door which sounds then like this so there's a little, little bit modulation going there's a uh, in the in the uh, studio one I selected the uh, the yeah CLA best bass stereo and there is a little bit of uh, compression so post compression going and there's a pitch going when I deselect this it sounds like this so I made it a little bit wide like this So that's the bass sound. I play everything with a pick. I'm not a finger bass player, but it doesn't matter. It's just to, to, to get the job done. And then the guitars, they sound like this. So this is the first guitar on the left. So it has a delay. So there you go, that's, the, that's the, the lead guitar, the lick that I play, it's in the left rhythm channel. Then the right rhythm channel is just the riff underneath. What the rhythm channel does, and it all uh, went through the to the FM9 to record the guitars. So fractal FM9, and then I used the preset to uh, do the muscle recording preset, and then C number four. This is my uh, uh, rhythm soft, I call it, and this has the uh, the JMT45 amp, the Brit JM45. That a little bit sounds like this uh, this sound that I used to record, but as you see, I use no effects to go into. It is just an amp and a cap, and that's it. That goes uh, the caps. I use my 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 own IRs that I bought from from own hammer that I really love. T75 and the V30. These are this is my my configuration that I always use to go to the to the PA out or when I record. I always use these EIRs to, to go there. So that's the sound that you're hearing in the um, in the recording here. So so this this sound. And the delay effects you hear in the end are all uh, post. So so that's post put on there. It's a little bit liquid delay and I think there's also something in the in the CLA guitar there's also a little bit of delay in there so uh, so that gives us a little bit of the delay sound in there so there's a keyboard so that does this that's a keyboard sound Played by my good friend René Kroon. So that's the keyboard part. He sent me the track and I just put it in. So I mix it all myself using this, uh, this software. And as you see, I made groups. I made an effect group with, with some reverb that I use here and there. So here you see it. That I use a little bit on the lead guitar, so the lead guitar comes uh, comes in uh, here at, uh, at this part. <laughs> And 
there's also out of the XFX the, the JM45 amp with just a little bit more gain. So here you can hear a little bit how I play these guitars in the song. So you see here, it's the same part, then you see here the guitar solo, and the guitar solo has uh, a few little tracks as you can see. So there's two tracks for playing just the lead, and at the end you hear, uh, there's also put on two tracks, lead three and four. And you see there, they are a little bit uh, uh, set aside, so 70 to the left, and the other one is 68 to the right. Just a little bit difference, but um, yeah, it's not like this. So that's the the solo in the in the song. So just lead you here. This is all in the rhythm channel. So you hear this here. the sound so yeah that's um, that's how I made uh, antisophobia so a little bit so you get a little bit inside how I mixed the song what tracks I got in the song so there's a total of uh, I think it is uh, 19 tracks for the drums. Yeah, about 19 tracks for the drums. Um, there's a s several guitar channels that I always use. I use always a, a left, right, and a rhythm middle. So the middle is uh, played here at the end. You can hear it here. So there comes an extra chord in there. This. Give it a little bit underneath, just just uh, you hardly notice it because uh, uh, now I show you the lo loose part and you think like, oh yeah, there's a guitar underneath. But uh, it just gives a little bit of uh, of extra. When I mix it, when I move it, it's empty. Just gives a little bit of distortion underneath, which which makes it, in my opinion, a little bit better. So that's at the end, and I put that right in the middle, and that's the only part where I use it in the song. So uh, the rest of the track is empty, as you can see. So yeah, that's um, that's a little bit insight about uh, antisophobia. So enjoy this little video. <laughs> 